All right, IBF Ring Magazine, Cruiserweight Champion of the World, Jai Opatai. Thank you so much, brother, for taking the time out to chat with us. Um, first of all, congratulations on your first title defense. Uh, it was an epic performance. When you uh, when you look back in hindsight, you've just frozen there. When you look back in hindsight at your first title defense, uh, when you reflect on it, do you feel a sense of relief that uh, the first title defense is out the way now, you're back in the ring? Or is it more about, okay, you know, this is business, let's let's move on to the next one. Line them up, I knock them down, let's get that momentum back. Uh, definitely, man. You know, um, finally, you know, <laughs> that's, the, that's the main thought was just finally, you know, we, we've done it, we're here, um, you know, headlining OVO Stadium, it's uh it's it's the start, you know what I mean? We got uh we got a lot more to do, um, you know, a lot more boxes to tick and you know, I'm I'm ready to tick them. So I'm excited. Uh mate, you've always believed in yourself and believed in your ability. It was no different in the lead up to the Jordan Thompson fight. But did you expect that you would dominate Jordan from beginning to end um the way you did? I don't want to say surprise, but but we but did you expect to dominate because you dismantled him basically from the beginning? Um, you know, I, I knew I had the tools to beat him, you know, and I and I knew they were really underestimating my power. You know, the way they were talking about him going to knock me out and all this stuff and you know what I mean? But, um, you know, it it's, it was good. And uh, and I, I sort of, when, when I'm in the ring, that's when I adapt. You know what I mean? Everyone kept sort of asking me, when am I, you know, what, what am I expecting from the fight? What am I doing this and that? But I sort of wanted to go off how he was going to be present, his body presence and stuff like that. So... You know, and I and I heard him early to the bo- the body, and I feel like that sort of really. He thought, "Fuck, this guy's actually got power." So, yeah. Um, you talked about in the lead up to the fight. You talked about the surgeries that you underwent; that they're almost upgrades. They they almost, in a way, sort of improved. But in the back of your mind, was there a thought about how the the body would hold up on fight night, or did you know through your extensive training, extensive sparring, did you know? Mate, I'm solid. I'm I'm good as gold. I'm ready to go. Yeah, no, I, I felt solid and I'm ready to go. You know, and I'm, I'm not faking when I say I feel like they're upgrades. You know what I mean? Like mm. be, before, so everyone's worried about the jaw, but before the jaw, I had my hand surgery, where the start of my pro career, the uh, long, I, I've only had the breeders fight and the one before the breeders fight where I had my new left hand. So every every fight before that, my left hand was shocking. You know what I mean? It was swollen all the time. Every camp I had was just trying to maintain it, making sure it wasn't too sore to go into the fight. You know, like we used to sort of line up 12 rounds of sparring and we'd do four rounds and then my hand would be that bad. It would just, you know what I mean? We wouldn't be able to finish. So after getting that surgery and the way it helped my left hand, and now, honestly, I, I don't have no problems with it. I, before the surgery, I thought there's no way they were going to fix it. You know what I mean? And like, we, we couldn't really afford it back then. In those days, we it was too much of a risk to sort of take all that time off and we weren't sure if it was going to fix it. But after having that surgery and now my left hand now, it's like a brand new left hand. It's just all my surgeries have just been upgrades. You know what I mean? They've just been... And, and that's what... They do. They go in and they fix the problem. Mm. You know what I mean. And mm. and with my team and you know with the right training and the and the the right healing process, it heals. You yeah. know what I mean. And and where the breaks are, they say where the breaks are, where the bone builds, where the breaks are, it's actually stronger. And I've got freaking metal rods holding it. So yeah. And and I did have so many camps like I. Mm. Like after the breeder fight, after the broken jaw, I, I got ready for about five fights. You know what I mean? So I done so much sparring, so much training. Oh, I was rowing outside of the ring, and people just hadn't seen it because I hadn't had the platform to show it. But yeah. you know, I felt like that's what I did. I, I showed it my last fight. 
Um, you said you wanted your first title defence to be in Australia. Obviously, that didn't happen. It happened in, in, in the UK. Um, immediately after the Jordan Thompson fight, you said to Eddie Hearn, you said the next fight, I, I, I want it to be here in Australia. Um, is there an update on that? Has your team, your manager, Mick Francis, been in talks with Eddie Hearn? Do we know if there's any developments and, and is that likely to happen, do you think? Um, so the, the, if the IBF demand Breedis, which it looks like they will, and then it, and then if Breedis takes the fight, which is another question, um, we just got to see what happens. But, um, yeah, it, there is a, there, there is a high risk, uh, high likely that we will be fighting in Australia for the next fight, you know, and, and I made it clear to Eddie Hearn, but in saying that, you know, I, I know if they need me to go overseas and get the job done again, I, I won't shy away from it, you know. Obviously, I would prefer it to be here on our home soil because this this is why I do what I do, you know. I, obviously, for myself and for my family and stuff like that, but also I, I take big pride on being, you know, leading the Australian boxing to where it's going, you know. we got some awesome fighters right now. we got me, Tim... Um, you know, Cambosis, we got the Maloney boys, and we got a lot of female boxers. Like, it's, it's, we when I when I was making my pro fights leading up to where I am today, I was fighting on NRL cards. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they were the they were the big cards, and and in Australia, yeah, some people watch them and stuff, and they do sell. But in on the international level. No, nobody overseas is buying a, a, a fight like that. You yeah. know what I mean? And and that's what I feel like we're lacking. And that's why if the other countries don't respect Australian boxing is because we, they haven't been given the platform to showcase the skills that we have. You know yeah. what I mean? Even like Foxtel's in, in Australia, but I'm trying to reach out and branch out to the world to show that we're good enough to beat these guys. You yeah. know what I mean? Well. Australia has great prospects that can win world titles. And, you know, for me to be a part of that and give them that platform is something that I'm very proud of. 100%. Do you, do you feel that the landscape here is changing in Australia and boxers' profiles are sort of becoming more mainstream and, and our fighters and our and your name is getting out there a little bit more now than, than previous years? For sure. Yeah, yeah. No, for sure, man. It's um like... Like I said, the, when I was first turning pro and the fight nights we had, the, it wasn't. There was no sort of leading on the international level, you know. Mm. There, like we've we've got like George Cambosis winning that world, you know. The beating Lopez was a massive card, yeah. and like a massive thing for Australian boxing. Then me and myself winning the world title, like it's just growing, and I feel like it's it's almost reaching a peak. But I also feel like there's a lot more improvement that we can make. So. It's exciting, you know, and to have Eddie Hearn on our team as well with Matchroom and stuff, you know, it's I'm excited, you know, and I'm excited to be a part of these big fights for Australia. Well, as the Ring Magazine and IBF champ, you've got a lot of options on your table at the moment. One name that comes up every time people talk about your future opponent is Chris Bilden Smith, of course. Um, he's over at boxer you're obviously with matchroom and uh, tasman fighters if boxing politics doesn't interfere and that fight can be made um on the stipulation that it happens in the uk you're saying that you'll take that in a heartbeat if that's what it takes for sure a hundred percent like um obviously i'd prefer that fight here i'd prefer it in gosford stadium in my hometown that's my goal to to have a unification fight there but um you know, if if I have to go over there and beat them over there, then I, then I will. Because I honestly believe that I win every single belt in this division. Um, just on, I'd like to pick your brain a little bit about the Cruiserweight division in general. We saw recently um, Gilberto Zurdo uh, Ramirez take on Joe Smith Jr. They made their Cruiserweight debut. Uh, Zurdo went on as you uh, went on to win, as you probably know that turned out to be a WBA uh, title eliminator. Um, there's a chance that Zurdo could go on to fight, I think it's Arsene Gulamarian, who's the WBA champion, who's been ordered to fight his mandatory Uniel Dorticos. Um, I just want to get your thoughts on on what do you think about 
Zurdo coming in, his first fight is for a WBA title eliminator. Do you feel like he's kind of leapfrogged a lot of the other guys that have been waiting in the queue to fight for that title? That's A. B, what do you think his chances as a cruiserweight? I mean, he was dominant as a super middleweight, but the cruiserweight is a completely different ball game. And C, let's say, hypothetical scenario, he wins and becomes WBA champ. Is that a unification fight that you, fight that you could get excited about and potentially fight in the USA? Man, to be honest, uh, I don't really think about all that stuff too much. Yeah. You know, I'm so focused on my own sort of journey. But I'm telling you, if he wins a WBA, I will fight him yeah. and I will beat him. Mm. I, I, I look, the only reason I know who he is is because I looked at the rankings and he was ranked above me on BoxRank. And I was like, who is this guy? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I've just went over to the UK, done what I did, and then I've looked at... The, and then people would send me the rankings and there's this guy above me, so I had to look at him. You know, he's not a bad little southpaw, but... Bro, hmm. I'd, get out of my way, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I'm on a mission to get all the belts, and if you've got one, then let's get it on. Um, you know, I'd love to fight and win a world, uh, heavyweight world title as well, you know? But hmm. like I said, I've got a few boxes to tick as a cruiserweight first, and I'm, and I'm looking forward to ticking them. And then once they're all done and, uh, and I'm settled, and then uh, I'm going to look at fighting for a, a heavyweight world title for sure. Any names on that hit list? To be honest, man, I don't look at names. Yeah. All I see is belts. That's all I want to win, you know? When my career's over and, you know, it's all said and done, I, I don't really take pride on saying, oh, I beat this name, I beat that name. I just want to say I won these belts because that's what really matters to me. My favorite activities are the ones that I hate the most. Yeah, right. You know, I, I train purely for results. You know what I mean? I, the harder, the better. Mm. You know, I, I want to I wanna be crawling out of that gym by the end of the day. You know, I'm doing three sessions a day, proper torture. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, pain is... That physical pain is the escape from that emotional pain. You know what I mean? I, mm. I live and breathe it every day. It's it's what I do, and it's and I honestly believe champions are born in the gym. The fights won before you're in the gym. You know what I mean? When, when you start fighting at this top level, and um, you start mixing up with the best, it becomes you know a, a thing of preparation. How how are you training? How are you prep? And the only way I walk into that ring fully confident that I'm going to win is knowing that I have done everything in my power. And I am ready for anything that happens in that ring. So, bro, I, I don't even pick my trainings. I rock up every day after and they just tell me, you're doing this, done, get it done. It, you know, sore, tired, does not matter to me. We get it done every day. Mate, can I say that was answered like a true champion? Um, I'll, I'll just finish up on this, bro. Uh, what's been the highlight of your career so far or is that highlight yet to come? Definitely, I feel like the highlights yet to come. You know, I've, I've, I've honestly feel like I'm just getting started. You know, I've, I've waited my whole life to to win the world titles and 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 fill out stadiums and stuff like that. You know, I've been fighting since I was eight years old. You know, I, boxing to me is the family business. It's it's something passed down to me. So I, I always knew this stuff was coming. So you know, it's it's just. I'm just looking around saying it's about time it's here. So, you know, I just can't wait for the next one. Jai Abitai, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you. Thank you for taking the time to chat with us. We're looking forward to seeing you in the ring, ASAP, and fingers crossed, man. Hopefully it's in Australia. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for the call. Thank you for the support. Thank you for watching Pound for Pound TV. Please remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell for future updates. See you in the next one. Check out our Patreon page to become a Patreon family member where you will receive some cool perks. If you're looking for some new threads, we've got t-shirts, hoodies, and much, much more. So head on over to our Michael A. Kobe Pound for Pound TV stores. They can be found on Redbubble and Spreadshop. Join me on my travels and head on over to my other YouTube channel titled Barefoot and Free. There you can follow me as I traverse the many parts of our planet and occasionally get into a spot of bother. Nonetheless, it's always fun and entertaining. 
If you're struggling with some of life's obstacles and challenges, my book, How to Get Out of Life Traps, might just be the answer that you're looking for to help guide you through the difficult times. It's helped many get past some of their darkest moments, and it might do the same for you. You can purchase it on Amazon, where you can also find a wide range of my other works. Those works include screenplay to book adaptations, a fairly unique concept, with genres covering comedy heist and revenge, drama, supernatural and crime, if that's more your cup of tea. You can find them by following the link provided.